has to watch the tennis and you're not even going to get me another Coke. Yeah, but it's a tiebreaker. Relax. You know what I wish we had? Like a really long straw so we don't even have to go downstairs to the kitchen. That would we be just, pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Right? How long of a straw could we actually make that you could use? Mm. Downstairs would be a bit of a stretch, I reckon. Yeah? Yeah. Don't think we could... How much is that? Like three, four meters? Yeah. I reckon we could do it. We need a lot of straws, though. I got a pack here. Oh, okay. Now, our first test, just to see that Nigel can use a straw properly, uh, we've got about a one meter length of straw here. Mm -hmm. You think you can suck through that? Yeah. That's going to be right. So we just take these um, drinking straws together, and hopefully... Yeah, that's all right. Well, there's a lot of air coming through, I think, from the... The joints and the joints, straws. Yeah. We've got to come up with some better way to test this out. Uh, I happen to have six meters of plastic tubing here. Non-toxic? Uh, that's what they said at the hardware store. All right, we're preparing the preliminary test. Nigel is lowering some tubing off the balcony. He actually thinks he's got a shot at sucking through six meters worth of tubing. Yep. I think he's got no chance and it's going to be nowhere close, but this will hopefully uh, allow us to establish it how much more. Nigel actually sucks. <laughs> he's getting ready up there. He knows there's a lot riding on it. When you're ready. Whoa, look at that. Look at that. Oh, he shoots up. He's got two meters. He's got three meters. Look at that guy go. He's getting four meters. Four meters. Five. Five meters. Six. Yeah! Now I'm going to try to do the same thing, but the tube I'm using has a thicker diameter. Mine is about uh, five mil. Whereas Nigel's was three mil, so we're gonna see if this makes any difference. Oh. <laughs> now, I guess the obvious question is, can Nigel do it? <laughs> And I don't think that's the obvious answer, but I'm pretty sure he's going to fail. Uh, but maybe what's worth talking about is how straw works in the first place. How does it work? Yeah, because this is really just a big bendy straw. If we look at a smaller version of a straw here, uh, we should all be familiar with how this works, or should we? I don't know. I think most people just think you are sucking the liquid in and swallowing it. But you kind of have to think about air pressure. Yeah, because what is actually happening is that air pressure is what's causing the coke in this case to go up the straw. Well, there's a difference in pressure between the atmospheric pressure and the pressure that you create by opening up your lungs and pulling your diaphragm down. So you reduce the pressure in your mouth and it's that difference in pressure between the atmospheric pressure and the pressure inside you which gets that liquid flowing into you. It's a bit like high jump and like someone has failed at the five millimeter diameter and then you're the next guy to take it on. Are you ready for this? I am ready. I'm He's ready been practicing well. his whole life for this. Yeah, you can see it's a strong start. Strong, strong start from Quan. He's got it. Oh, he's 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 going big right here. You can see there's a lot of determination. Oh, he's getting close. He's getting close. Look at this. Look at this. Can he do it? Can he do it? Oh, look at he's done it. Ah. Ah. That was disgusting. Yeah, I definitely felt like my tongue while I was trying to suck it up was being pulled out into into the straw. I felt the same thing. Yeah. But and it was tougher, definitely tougher. Well done, sir. Thank you. It means a lot. For his next challenge, we're going to try to get him to suck through 10.3 meters, which is the theoretical maximum size of straw. How are you feeling? Well, that theoretical maximum kind of relies on being able to get a perfect vacuum and Although I am perfect in a lot of ways, I don't know that I can create a perfect vacuum. I've often thought that there's actually a perfect vacuum inside Nigel's head. <laughs> Today we're going to really find out, won't we? Yeah. Okay, we've got the setup here. We're down at uh, Tamarama Beach. And we have 10 and a half meters worth of tubing, which goes all the way up to Nigel at the very top there. So we're going to see if I can relive some of my former glory and get the red liquid up this height. Three. Two, one. There you have, Nigel is starting to suck on that straw. There he goes, looking strong. Create that vacuum, approaching the edge of a cliff there. Go, Nigel, go! 
Come on, Nigel! Doesn't seem to be going anywhere. We seem a bit stuck. On that point right there, you can see the determination, the focus. I'm trying to see how high that is. He's done well, but it just doesn't look like it's going to happen. All right, so uh, Nigel did pretty well there. We saw that he could uh, get the liquid up that tube about seven meters. Not the theoretical maximum of 10 meters. Still more than you. That's just a good saying, point, that's saying. a good point. If Nigel could have created a perfect vacuum, then the water would have gone up to 10.3 meters by our calculations. This is kind of similar to how they used to measure atmospheric pressure in the old days, by millimeters of mercury. So atmospheric pressure would push mercury up a tube with a vacuum at the other end. Uh, 760 millimeters. 760 millimeters, so about 0.76 of a meter. So you can see why they would have used mercury and not water, because if you were doing this with water, you'd need... Yeah, a cliff. Yeah, you'd need a 10 meter long uh, barometer. So yeah, much better to do it with millimeters of mercury. Definitely. And of course, nowadays we measure it in kilopascals. Yes. Anyway, well done, Nigel. You really suck. <laughs> so how do we work out the maximum length of straw that you could suck through vertically? Well, think about this. You place a straw into the liquid and you start sucking from the top. That decreases the pressure at the top and the difference in pressure between your mouth and atmospheric pressure creates a force that pushes the liquid upwards. Now that liquid which is in the straw has a weight which is equal to the volume of the liquid times its density times the gravitational field strength. So if we set these two forces equal to each other, you see that the pressure difference must be equal to the density of fluid times its height times the gravitational field strength. And if we sub in the numbers, we find that the